Go support that. Ask the Iceman.com. <laughs> I only had one subscriber. He wanted a refund. <laughs> Baby, it's gonna be all right. We gonna take care of your sugar. Mm hmm. We gonna. You want some peach cobbler, baby? Mm -hmm. Would that make you feel better, honey? Mm -hmm. huh, huh, sugar. <laughs> Yes, baby. Can you do me a favor? Sure, sugar. What you want from Grandma? Can you subscribe to As the Ice Man? That cup. No, sugar. I can't help you with that. I can't help you with that. That's Grandma can't do that. Uh, that's just nasty. <laughs> Shut up, boy. No grown man be crying. You tuned in to the Ice Man Show. I'm your host, the Ice Man. I was just a little upset. You know, I'm a little emotional right now. As you can probably tell, I got so much on my mind. So many things going on and so many things swirling in the in the mind of the of the Ice Man. I got some, a couple of things I wanted to pass along to you, but before I do that, I wanted to remind you to go by AskTheIceMan.com for your relationship advice, life coaching. If you're having some issues with your life and you need someone to talk to, you want to talk to a psychotherapist to help you get through the rough patches of life, feel free to stop by AskTheIceMan.com and sign up for a life coaching therapy subscription. Also, those of you who are looking to work for yourself, maybe you're tired of working for Hunky McGee and you want to be self-employed, well, you can do that too if you come by AskTheIceMan.com. We can help you out with that so you, that you can become your own boss. You tune into the Iceman Show. There's a couple of things that I wanted to talk about that I thought were just this this is just some information that just has to get out there. It, it, it there's just some ridiculousness that happens. Uh, I don't know. I just happen to be one of those individuals who ends up just being the bearing witness to such nastiness. Um, you know, one thing I I have realized. In being a businessman and being success, being fairly successful over the years in different types of businesses, the one thing I realize is that so many of our people are so full of shit and they, they're just hypocrites. And Several of you have pointed that out. You, uh, uh, several of you, and without going into the comment section of the videos and you know mentioning usernames, I mean that's that's rather irrelevant. Um, but it, it's it's funny to me, you know, when a couple of brothers said that, and I, and I, I'm so busy right now, I, you know. I really don't have the time to sit here and worry about what other people are doing. I just don't. I don't have that kind of time. But what I find is funny when a couple of brothers have said, sent messages, I said, that makes a lot of sense. 
And a couple of the brothers said, you know, Ice, these niggas will sit up here and talk this shit about, oh, I'm sick of the white man. All oh, the white man's doing this to me. Oh, Sancho and them getting, you know, getting favoritism at the job. And my black ass is being treated like the resident house nigga. Okay. The, and, 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 and these are the same niggas who, if we place $10,000 in their hand and gave them a customer base, a client base, these niggas would be out of business in a week. Okay? And not just that, but they would not just that, but they would not only be self-sabotaging, but these same people would do all that they can to fail. And, and I, I'm, I'm not saying that they would consciously do that. But it's based on their working model. And those of you who, like I said, if you don't know anything about mental health, you don't know what a working model is. Okay? It's basically the engine that drives the train. So basically, no matter what you say and what you tell people, your behavior is already predetermined if your working model is exposed. Okay? It's almost expected that you're going to fuck up. That's basically what I'm saying. But it's a little, obviously, it's more uh, theoretical and a little bit more academic than that. I'm just breaking it down for you. I I've seen black people, when given the opportunity to do their own thing, these and when we're and we're and we're still talking about the the black guy and the and the and the black woman who is complaining about getting shitted on in the workplace. They're, they're sick and tired of working for 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 a boss that looks like somebody else and not them. And yet, when these people are faced with the opportunity to have their own thing, they either fuck it up or they allow somebody else to fuck it up and then they blame them. Okay. And so we could give them a client base. We can give them $10,000 in cash. We could even guarantee, guarantee that all their operating expenses are already paid. And these, these guys will still find some way. To allow niganomics and a shitty working model to come out and ruin everything. And this is what makes a lot of you hypocrites. Okay? And I, I, I had a relative call me uh, last night and we were talking. Matter of fact, we did a three or four way. We did a conference call. We were all uh, a few cousins and, and a couple uncles. And we were talking and we were, we were talking about this very shit about how black people need to change the way they think. And we got to do it. We, we have to do a better job. We, we can't sit up there and call the white man out and talk shit and then turn around and get the opportunity and then fuck it up. How many black people have you seen do that? I remember one time when I was still married, my sorry ass ex-wife uh, used to... Uh, she was a teacher and that there was this uh, teacher's aide who was ghetto as hell. This old black woman. This is when we lived back east. And this, her brother or somebody, I don't know, he used to come up to the school, pick his son up uh, or pick his uh, nephew up or, or something like that. And so my ex got to know him. And so I remember one time. We gave, we gave her, we gave, uh, 
him a we gave him a ride. Yeah, we gave him a ride or something like that. I, I think that's what it was. Yeah, we gave we 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 gave we gave we gave him a ride. And and what was so funny And what's so uh And so what what I thought was interesting is that this guy said he had gotten beaten up he had gotten beaten up by the police. And as a result of that, the city settled out of court with his him and his lawyer for I think, shit. Shit, I think they got, I think he got 40 grand. Okay? He got like 40 grand. And it was just ridiculous. It was just hilarious. Okay. This shit was just fucking ridiculous. And when asked, I think I asked him, I think I asked him what he what it, what was he going to do with the 40 grand. And this dumb nigga, he he actually gave a good answer, but I think it was because he knew I was a college educated brother. And he probably heard on the down low that I probably would clown him if he said some dumb shit. So he said, oh, oh, I'm going to buy some property. OK. And what he ended up doing. He didn't buy any property. And all he ended up doing. Was getting high. Drinking the money that drinking the money away, loaning money to ghetto nigga, other ghetto crackhead niggas, crackish niggas. Okay. Okay. So what they what what he ended up doing was blowing the whole forty thousand. Now I'm not you see, I'm not sitting here trying to advocate that forty thousand dollars is a lot of money. Forty thousand dollars ain't shit. Cause I've blown through twenty thousand dollars in a few weeks. Okay, I, I, I'm not even going I'm not even gonna get on that. Okay, let's not even let's not even go there. Okay, I done, I done had a lot of money go through my fingers. Okay, I, just straight up let me tell you. Okay, so, so this motherfucker, this motherfucker, uh, <clears throat> this motherfucker blows through all this money and ends up Broke and unemployed again. Actually, he never even, I don't even think he had a job. But me and my ex used to talk about this stupid nigga. Okay, we used to talk about this stupid nigga, man. And we was just like, see, this is the epitome of black, black people in America. Just being stupid. Okay. And then these are the first, these are the first, these are the these are the first niggas who want to sit up here and scream bloody murder when they when when they blow their opportunity and then people don't take them serious no more. People like, hey man, don't, I ain't fucking with you, dog. You blew it. Okay. This is the nigga that's sitting up here in the you know this is the nigga that's that's sitting in the middle of the street, butt naked, crying, talking about fear me, fear me. We all we got, man. We all we got, Nino. 
Okay? That's that nigga. CMB, man. Cash Money Brothers, man. Okay? Fuck out of here, man. Okay? You can't cry bloody murder about the white man or racism in America or George Zimmerman or any of this other stupid shit that goes on to, with black folks in America and you out here putzing around and bullshitting and not taking care of business. See, I can't, I can't talk about this. I can't put this shit on, 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 on display more than I can, man. I mean, it's, it's painfully obvious that the country is moving in a direction against the people. Okay? It's going against the flow of the people. And if you aren't on, if you aren't on, if you're not on board, if you're not on board, if you don't understand capitalism in America, you are going to be one of these black people who are going to be unemployed, broke, and obsolete. And you're going to be sitting on the sidelines begging the fucking government to give you something. And they're not going to have anything to give you. Then why, why do you think President Obama and Congress are doing this sequester shit? What they're trying to do is starve out the fucking American people who are de totally dependent upon government resources, whether federal or state. That's what, he, that's what they're doing. This is intentional. That sequester shit was intentional. Okay, you can sit up there and, and act like, you know, if you, you know, all on President Obama, you a President Obama fan, talking about, oh, he had no choice, uh, the president's hands are tied. Let me explain something to you. That has nothing to do with it. That's, that, and what's the, what, what, the only people, because the only people I really care about are vets. I can fuck all the rest of these people who ain't trying to do shit. Okay? What bothers me are the military families and the, the disabled veterans who are dependent upon that check every month. I, I feel for them. My heart goes out to those veterans and those veterans' families and, their, and military members and their families. Those are the brothers and sisters, regardless of color. Those are the people that I feel for because technically I'm one of those people. Okay? I'm not dependent upon what I, those checks I get per month, but that's not, that doesn't mean I'm going to give them away either. <laughs> okay? But I earned them. I did. <laughs> so, the thing is, people, you know, there's a ruse going on, and you need to be aware of it. Okay? And, and I, I want to I want to tell you guys a little story. And this story is the epitome of the nigger mentality on steroids. See, I want to drive this home in this video that I'm fully aware of all of you niggas who. If I give you the opportunity to help you start a business, you ain't going to do nothing but sit there and hold your dick. Okay? And if, if you're not going to sit there and hold your dick, you're just going to sit there and let your titties tingle. Okay? You ain't going to do shit. I'm calling your ass out. You ain't going to do shit. I can put up the money for you to start a business and your black ass will still be sitting here in the same spot Next year, this same fucking day. Broke, starving, and dusty. Okay? And it's just like the brothers, the two brothers that, that, that left those messages calling you niggas hypocrites. He's, they're right. They're right. You ain't nothing but a hypocrite. You don't really want to be working for yourself. All you want to do is be hood fabulous. You just want to be ghetto fabulous and go to your little hood club and be the ghetto superstar and the, the nigga that's on disability. And, you know, you got a couple of, you know, you done flashed your little check in front of a couple bitches. So they think you got some money. So all the all the bitches in the hood say you just got a disability check. So they trying to holler at you. Man, I saw a case on Judge Judy today, man. Oh, my God, man. 
typical California niggas, man. I, you know what? I'm going to talk about that real quick, man. That was old, lame-ass, selfish-ass brother on there. I could tell he was a L.A. nigga or an I.E. nigga. You know, those of you who don't know what the I.E. is, that Inland Empire. He one of them Inland Empire niggas. Okay, with this pretty nice looking little chocolate thing, had a bubble ass. I was like, damn, I would, I, 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 I might have to, I would, I don't know, man. I, I done ran into some cute ass hood chicks that I done had to cut. Okay, but I got rid of them bitches, boy. They were like, ah, ah, nigga, ah, I wish I knew where you live, nigga. I have my cousins come up, cousin Pookie and Ray Ray call them. Fuck you up, punk nigga. Okay, come over here and fuck the shit out of me, and then you ain't gonna call me afterwards. Fuck you, nigga. Okay. But anyway, this man, he talking about the simp within. This little, this this little young nigga, probably about thirty, twenty nine, thirty. Man, this nigga, let me tell you what he did. I didn't find I didn't, I didn't find out about him being on disability until the end of the end of the case, but apparently he must have got hurt on the job. And you know California has a very lucrative I will say I will use that word lucrative disability system. If you get hurt on a job, even if you working at McDonald's in California, you are liable to make uh more money than you did when you worked, <laughs> okay? Now, I don't know if they changed the system since I was living out there, but I know when I lived out there, oh, my God, motherfuckers making out like fat rats out there. But anyway, apparently homeboy had gotten hurt on a job and got, got uh, his disability money. He met her, and this is why, this is how I knew this was a simp situation. He ended up moving in with her, with her two kids. None of the kids were his. He moves in with her, and he says that he would stay home with her son and watch her son while she went to work. And then he said as soon as his disability money ran out, then... She got, she started dating other men. She started going, he said, right after, he said, right after my money stopped coming in, she started uh, going out with her cousins and her friends, meeting other niggas, and then texting them in the house. Okay, I'm, you know, why do, why do niggas do simp shit? Why do niggas put themselves in a position to do simp shit and then get mad at the, at the outset? They get mad at the outcome. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, you watching another man's kid, dog? See, I'm going to tell you exactly how that situation came came to be. He probably met her in one of them little hood clubs around there in San Bernardino County or Riverside County, wherever. He probably met a little, met her at one of them little ghetto clubs because I done been to them clubs because I used to have a house out there. And I would take them bitches over my big ass fucking house. Them bitches would be like, Oh my God, this you you just you live here? Okay. Big ass five bedroom house, two master bedrooms. You dig? And you know, this motherfucker He probably meets this chick at a, one of them clubs, tells her he got all this disability money coming in. And then she's like, oh, I can use this nigga to pay my bills. And she moved his ass into her home, which I think she was, uh, she was, uh, renting a house and had that nigga move in. Pay, he paying bills and shit, taking care of her kids, just being a simp. But this nigga was a drunk and a wannabe fake ass music producer. Okay. Anyway, this nigga, he gets tossed out on his ass, and the reason what the case went down is because they ended up, she ended up putting his shit out there on the line, just, 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 just playing him. See, this is one of the reasons why I don't deal with black women, 
because black women are just just inherently evil. OK, I'm not saying a white woman won't put your shit out there or a Hispanic woman won't put your shit out there. Or an Asian woman will put your shit out there like that, too. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that, you know, if you put yourself in a position where you're going to get fucking used, these bitches are going to use you. OK. But I had to talk about that, even though that that's kind of. You know, outside of the scope of what we're talking about on this video, but still, I had to talk about anything dealing with simp, and I got to talk about it. I hope y'all don't mind. But anyway, lastly, I want to tell you guys a story, and and this is the crux of my point in this video, and the, it speaks to the hypocrisy of you guys, some of you guys, and. Our, our black people as a whole, when we go out here and do stupid shit and not hold up our end when we're faced with the opportunity of, of betterment, okay? The, the Twin City area, Minneapolis, St. Paul, uh, both cities has, uh, they have, uh, economic development departments and basically what what this is this is a city entity but the uh but they actually do something a little different uh outside of the city although they are a city entity okay and i think they're still they're they're, they're considered a non-profit if i remember correctly so St. Paul has one and Minneapolis has one. And then uh, Ramsey County has some things and then also Hennepin County has some things. Anyway, the, uh, some of the area uh, alphas, kappas, matter of fact, there's a cap. No, I think there's, a, there's an omega. There's an omega. There's a, uh, there's a Q who is the head of the uh, of the St. Paul Economic Development uh, Center. And basically what these people do is they work with people on blight, blighted neighborhoods. They, they, they try to get people to buy land in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, the inner city parts of the city. And they, try to boost business ownership amongst the residents there within the county and city area. So going forward, this brother, this, this Q that I, that, that I'm, uh, I, I don't know him very well. I just met him a couple of times and we used to correspond via email. Anyway, we were, he and I would, we were, we, we, what I found out is that, they were putting together a what's called an economic development program to try to boost black black or minority business ownership in Minneapolis and St. Paul. So they were working with the Minneapolis office as well. So this was kind of a joint city event. So it, it wasn't a small event at all. And so all and, and then also they had corporate partners, excuse me, uh, corporate partners in the area who were donating money to help get this event off the ground. So you had, you know, like Lando Lakes, you had really big car dealerships, uh, uh, Suncoast Airlines, you know, you had corporate sponsorship. So this wasn't going to be no small thing. This was they were actually trying to uh, make an effort to make this thing successful. And so the word we got the word out that, you know, and see, because you got to understand something. What drove this was all the complaining that all of these North Minneapolis niggas and St. Paul niggas was complaining about they wasn't helping black people, you know, regular common working black people to start businesses. 
And so they was like, okay, okay, we done heard all this complaining. We're going to put our money where our mouth is. Okay, niggers. What we're going to do is we're going to set up a, a, a series of symposiums for you. And all you got to do is show up. We're going to have banks here who can possibly provide you with corporate loans. We, we have, we're going to have other financial institutions. They, we're going to have local financial institutions. We're also going to have uh, nationwide institutions like Wells Fargo and people like that here in the area. And so these, you know, like, let me explain something to you. Minnesota people don't fuck around because they are very Europe, Europe, my, European minded. Because those of you who have ever lived in Europe, you know, Europeans don't fuck around. If they do something, they do it. They don't fuck around. They get it. They get it in. OK, they get it in. So these Minnesota folks don't bullshit. If you call them out on something, them white folks will get off their ass. And say, OK, well, we're going to prove y'all wrong and we're going to we're going we're going to get it in. And so they set this event up and they, you know, there, there's no black radio station in Minneapolis, St. Paul. There's a, the, a white guy owns a station and he lets niggas run it. And they play black old school R and B all day long. They don't play no hip hop. They they play R and B all day, and then I think later some days they play like contemporary jazz type shit, like Najee and uh, uh, um, uh, Kenny G, that type of shit. And so they uh anyway. They advertised on, 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 I forgot the name of the radio station. I ain't been there in so long. They advertised on the radio. They advertised on KBIG or whatever that station is. And, um, oh, KFWB, uh, which is a big pop station and the Tony Fly show, whatever, I think 98.5. They got two stations that play hip hop. Well, one plays hip hop and other and still is plays some other stuff, too. But anyway, they were they were playing. Uh, they play hip hop, too. This other station, Tony Fly Show, they play uh, they play uh, uh, hip hop. Anyway, they did some major advertising. It was like minorities get out. And, they, and, and yeah, you know, they were, obviously it's more black people there than anybody as far as minorities are concerned. I mean, Hispanics. There's a lot of Hispanics that moved up there to the Twin City area, but they only in one little tiny area or they working on the farms. And like I said, uh, Minnesota ain't densely populated, except in the Twin City area. Anyway, man, they put this event on and they put money into it. They didn't fuck around. Come the day of the event. People show up, corporate sponsors show up, uh, local biz black business owners show up. Do you know that all these ghetto niggas that was complaining about we need some help and we need to try to start businesses and we need to do this and we need to do that. Do you know these niggas didn't even show up? Huh? Do you know that your little ghetto brothers and sisters, your little nigglet, little relatives, they did not show up. These niggas didn't even show up. If the only black people who were there were black business owners who didn't even need the help, who were already established. And we walking around there, and I, you know, even some of the some of the grad chapter, uh, Alpha Phi Alpha brothers, my frat brothers, man. We were walking around. We was just like, man, look at this shit. Where, where, is, where, where, where are the, the, the black people who want to start their own shit? Where are the enterprising black people? Where are the entrepreneurial black people? i tell you where they were. At home smoking weed and sitting on their asses and sitting on their dicks. Okay? And what's so bad about it, the corporate sponsors really weren't that teed off. The people who were really angry at these ghetto niggas that sit up here and talk all this shit around there in the Twin City area talking about no, nobody's trying to help them. 
The people who were really pissed off were those brothers and sisters, those deltas and those Qs and, and those and those economic development people, government people who, who took out time out of their uh, out of their month to help set this thing up. And then these niggas didn't even show up. It might have been one or two people. And then the people that did show up, all they were there to do was try to eat. They was just there to try to eat. They weren't walking around trying to talk to none of them white folks or talk to, the, you know, the rep, the bank representatives that was there. They wasn't doing shit. They wasn't doing shit. The few people that did show up, they, they, they was just there being ghetto niggas as usual. So let me let me just let me just let me just say this here, man. Don't come by my videos complaining about how you not get no help. When I have been to I don't know how many self empowerment uh, 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 symposiums where black folks are they trying to give black folks a leg up. And when we and when we show up to the shit, you won't even show your lazy ass up there. But yet you gonna come on YouTube leaving messages underneath my videos talking dumb shit, talking about the bank didn't loan you any money or you or uh uh your family won't support you. I done got private messages by guys talking about man, I started my own business and even you know, even my immediate family shitted on me and all this kind of stuff. Hey man, I don't wanna hear it. You guys are given so many opportunities and you just blow it. So, and, and you know what? What this one thing that Tariq Nasheed said about haters. Tariq Nasheed made, made a very great observation. And you know what he said? He said, haters are people who have personal inadequacies and shortcomings. And a lack of talent or no talent. And the reason why they hate on people like the Iceman or some of the other brothers and sisters who are handling their business. The reason why they hate on us is because they see in us what they don't see in them. You tune in to the Iceman show. I'm your host, the Iceman. Check out AskTheIceMan.com. Go by there and sign up for a subscription or just come by and check out the website, see what's happening. If you want to book the Iceman for a speaking engagement, feel free to do so. I will have the writer form up uh, hopefully this week so you can download that and read it and know what's going on and know what I'm asking for uh, ahead of time. I had a great time uh, down here in H-Town this weekend. We had a great event. A lot of the brothers and sisters talked to me after the show. I gave out business cards. A lot of the sisters and brothers who do, who did a, attend do want to change their lives. They want to make their lives better. You can make your life better too because happiness is a choice. Holler at your boy.